All right. Hey, hey, Poodle family. Here we are again Wednesday, July 21st with our weekly Poodle Cast. Uh, housekeeping for you. You heard last time we are now on iHeartRadio, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, all your favorite players, of course, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. So here's the thing. And we're going to talk a little bit about so the word charity is going to come up today with this guest. So I want to make sure that you do something and that's that you subscribe and you have to subscribe. And I'm not saying this because um, I want to build follow. OK, I do. I do want it to build. But um, I want to do this because if we hit the a certain numbers with YouTube, we can use this channel to create revenue. And I've already decided that all the revenue that will come through from this channel and this show will be donated 100% to our adopted charity or charities if we get more of them. So I want it, so I need everybody to subscribe, share. We need the uh, viewer count up so that we can utilize this platform to continue to do good for this token uh, and for the kids uh, that uh, we help uh, through uh, our charity work. So uh, make sure you get that out there. Subscribe. I've already said I'm not taking a penny from this at any time. It's always going to go 100% to our charity. So uh, that's the big Big news, sort of. Bigger news, and maybe maybe uh, Hunter will talk about this. We'll find out. Uh, we have another uh, uh, pool. Uh, uh, no, was it a, a, a way to purchase, and that is through Doge, and we have tied together with that. So uh, a liquidity pool. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let he's actually the experts in a lot of this stuff, so I'm gonna let him say that. But this is huge news, and being able to see, and we might have saw it on the Telegram earlier that people traded Doge for Poodle. That's huge. Uh, and kind of going through that because obviously it is the biggest uh, meme coin out there and has a community. So this is really important for us to be able to make these steps as this project continues to grow. So that being said, everybody, um, I'm going to do no further ado. No one comes to actually listen to me, so uh, I don't know why I'm continuing to talk. You come to listen to the great guests, and so I am going to bring on our guest right now. Let me uh, let me pull this up. Um, there we go. Hunter, you are now on the screen. Uh, Hunter Patterson. So l- let me just say that there... Um, I'm going to have you introduce yourself, but as I kind of give this introduction, let me say there's some people who come into the project and just get have this like fire behind them and this kind of this real legit legitimacy between how they came into the project and what you know and their you know their belief in it and I, that was one reason why I wanted to reach out to you um, because I think you really take a um, an unbiased look at how the whole space works. So that being said, let's stop having me talk. Will you introduce yourself, tell people a little bit about who you are uh, and all that stuff? Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Hunter Patterson. Uh, So I've been in the crypto space since you could use Raspberry Pis to mine Bitcoin. So but many, many long time, about eight years now. Um, over the past three years specifically, I've been tasked with working in the uh, working in the uh, crypto space to find coins, tokens um, that are legitimate, and to help nonprofit organizations uh, perform fundraising through the blockchain. Um, a few months ago, I had come across uh, a few projects that had actually started out on the Binance Smart Chain Network. One of them uh, had been had been Poodle, and I had just taken a look at it. Um, and it, at, on the surface, it seems like every other project that exists out there on the BSC chain that it's it's one of eleven hundred tokens that are released every day. And nothing really struck out uh, at first. Nothing really had struck out specifically about it. Um, But as I started to do more vetting into the project, I had noticed that they were partnering with uh, legit organizations that I personally had affiliation with known as Canines for Disabled Children. And so part of my platform is, as you had mentioned, is to take an unbiased look at a lot of these projects in the Binance space and understand that there are legit uh, there are legit crypto projects that exist out there to help nonprofit organizations all over the world help realize their fundraising dreams and goals, uh, while also introducing them to the concept of the blockchain as well. So what really attracted me with Poodle 
was the fact that the the developers were were on point. They were answering questions. The community was real. It wasn't made up of bots. And and the fact that they were partnering with a real nonprofit organization that I myself uh, had had worked with in the past. And so I dove right in and 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 here we are today right <laughs> taking a look at it together <laughs> yeah absolutely i know look how far you've come you've you no, making it on the pod no just kidding um the <laughs> um look, but i want to go back because i loved when we had the pre-chat you said that you've looked into what hundreds of di- different projects and all that so mm-hmm. um i really want to talk about that um is one how do you even go about you know, what do you do when you look at a project? What are the telltale signs between something that's legit and not? And the numbers you shared with how many weren't were very surprising. Um, and what are some of those things? Absolutely. So on any given month, I'm looking uh, anywhere between 150 and 200 projects uh, that, that just knowing, again, 1,100 tokens are coming out roughly on a daily basis. Some of the things that I'm looking for um I, I'm looking for originality and I'm looking for context. When the when the term charity is used, that's it's almost like clickbait, if you will. Uh, th- that's to give a potential investor the warm, fuzzy feeling that as they're investing in this project, they're doing well unto a charitable organization, maybe feeding the homeless, helping to cure cancer. But oftentimes these projects never actually disclose whom they're supporting. They always use terminology like it's coming, um, we'll have that in the next quarterly update, our, our roadmap is it is in production. And a lot of these projects are putting more of an emphasis on we have influencers, we have ads, we, we, have, the, the, we have the stars in the sky ultimately is what we're going to sell to you. And those are some immediate red flags right there when somebody such as myself uh, who has been doing crypto investing for many years, is looking for a project for the long term and looking for something that, what are you supporting and what partnerships do you have? And I've always felt that if that project cannot answer the question right then and there as to how their charitable uh, partnerships are, are set up, walk away. Mm. Because it's very easy for these projects to say, we're going to donate 2% to charity. Well, which ones? We haven't established that yet. And so there's really no way to verify that the development team is actually not keeping that that 2% wallet. Um, you know, you hear project state liquidity lock. You hear them say that uh, you know, we're, we're rug proof. We've been audited. And it almost seems like they're trying too hard <laughs> to convince you that their project is safe. When really, in all honesty, if a project wants to do well, be above board, as Poodle has been. Be transparent. The the development team is is docs, or the development team is openly available for Q&A. The community is is working together to help fuel those charitable initiatives. And most importantly, a lot of these projects that I'm sure you as well have uh, come across these past few months, really how many of them are still in existence today. Yep. And, and so that's one of those things to take a look at is, you know, I, I, could, I could technically go on a list for the entire podcast here of some of those red flags, I'd be happy to get into most of them. Um, but really the thing that stood out from Poodle compared to hundreds of these others that get vetted was the fact they were able to answer that partnership right then and there. Mm-hmm. And they even encouraged, contact them. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that that's something that's huge. If, if I'm contacting a nonprofit and they say, yeah, we're partnered with them, we're, yeah. we're building this future of, of, of nonprofit, this, this charitable donation structure uh, that matters, not it's coming yeah. and we'll get back to you. Just give us your money ahead of time. Yeah, no. So huge. And I loved that, too, because I remember when uh, like Canines for Disabled Kids was first announced. And, you know, it obviously is announced as, hey, this is, we're looking to do it. We're going to build it, um, the transparency there. And then the next announcement was, hey, everyone, go to their website. They've put our logo on their website. Here's a picture of us in their office talking about this. And that's huge. And, you know, you don't see that all the time with a, a lot of things. And I never really thought about this as you just named off all of those 
those buzzwords, right? The, you know, liquidity lock, the charity, the rug, we're, we're rug pull free. We've done all, you know, audited all these things. And I never really thought of it as working too hard um, because you just assume you have to have those things, but you're right. Like though, because, and you do have to have those things, right? I mean, the, but maybe that's just the, um, everyone saying here, I'm proving I'm legit because I can put that on a website. Um, but then how do you now go and verify that? So talk a little bit about your verification process. So, I mean, I know you, you mentioned a lot of the, the red flags, the things that drew, drew you to, to Poodle, but there has to be something where you go in and go, that's fake. I know they're saying charity, but it's not really charity or whatever. I don't, you know, how do you know that? So I'll give you an example. There was a a local project here in Dayton, Ohio, uh, where a gentleman was putting together a coin for veterans mental health. Now this hits home to me. I proudly served in the United States Marine Corps for eight years before being medically discharged due to cancer in 2006. When I hear about a program, uh, any program that supports our brothers and sisters in arms, I'm there. 100%. And so the first thing I wanted to do is ask, how can I help? You know, you you hear about something that really hits home and you want to help. The gentleman uh, was not able to furnish much in in the ways of of the project outside of if you sent him Ethereum, he would send you tokens in return, the pre-sale, if you will. Mm. Um, I asked what charitable organizations he was partnered with, what veteran organizations has he been in touch with. More importantly, are you yourself a veteran? Do you have veterans on your project? Uh, I ended up getting banned from that group uh, for asking those <laughs> questions. So it, that really just kind of hit home to me because that gentleman was able to raise $300,000 um, from potential prospective investors who were thinking, when Lambo? Mm-hmm. And, and and that's that's the mentality we got to change in this space. We all are in crypto. We would love to make money. I wouldn't mind a Lambo personally. Mm-hmm. People ask me all the time if I'm rich. I say no, but my wife is. <laughs> um, but those red flags, when a, a project is starting up and the development team seems to be taking more of an approach on the, the defensive, oh, yeah, we're covered, we're covered, we're covered. And they say we're liquidity locked. One of the first things I'm going to do is go look at the wallet structure on that project. If I see there's a wallet that owns 40% of the token count, what good is locking the liquidity? If one person has the ability to wipe out 40% of that liquidity in one fell swoop. Um, I've gone and looked at uh, wallets that seem to be a little bit too robotic in nature. Whereas you go down the structure of 100 wallets, you'll notice that they all have exactly the same amount of tokens inside of them. Mm. And that's another way that the developers can kind of sell off percentages of the tokens um, that they themselves may not have direct control over. And so these are little, uh, these are little tricks that developers would try to use to help give a sense of security into their project and say, well, here's my wallet, full disclosure, it's right here, we're not touching it. Here's the marketing wallet, full disclosure, we're not selling it. But all of a sudden you're trying to realize as you're watching the holder count on a project release, go from 100 to 300 to 400 and 1,000 and so forth, and you're noticing there's a lot of sales that are going on. It makes you wonder where are these additional holders coming from? There's not, there's nobody buying, but where is this coming from? And developers use this technique to be able to spoof these phantom wallets and then move tokens from uh, from the actual contact contract address into those other wallets and begin to sell right out from underneath you. Wow. And so those are flags that I look for that if somebody tells me the liquidity is locked, the only thing that tells me is the developer doesn't have access to a magical button where they click withdrawal and empty the liquidity pool. It doesn't mean they don't have dominating control over a large percentage of those tokens. It doesn't mean that they don't uh, hide what level of control they have over those tokens. If you've ever seen someone sell $3, $4, their Telegram chat room could have 12,000 people in it. Their Twitter account could have 25,000 followers. But the truth is you could buy 1,000 Telegram bots for $25 very easily Um, for less than $5,000. You could purchase a telegram network. Let's just say 
12,000 followers in Telegram, 25,000 followers on Twitter. Most importantly, you can buy your coin market cap listing. That's the other piece there is that there is this there's this perception in the crypto space that if you're on CoinGecko and you are on coin market cap that you are a valid project. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Bots can rig transactions, special services as we like to call them can be purchased to get your listing on coin market cap. Money talks in this industry. And when you have legit projects like Poodle that are doing this organically, that have said, we're not paying influencers. We're not using our market capital here that we've raised the blood, sweat, and tears of our investors to go pay an influencer who has 100,000 followers to talk about us. It's these legit projects that fall behind to all the scams that are taking to the forefront because they're able to buy their way into coin market cap, into coin gecko, all their advertisements and so forth. Yeah. And then you'll notice out of those 12,000 people that are in Telegram, uh, usually there's a voice chat that's opened when the project goes live. And you'll notice there's maybe 30 or 40 people in there. That's got to be a red flag there too. So there's a lot of things that that I look at. I've actually been uh, putting together quite a, a large checklist of things and some videos for some other uh, folks that I, that I work with um, to help educate them in the space. Because legit projects such as Poodle are always going to be left behind just so long as these scams are being empowered to race to the front of the line. Yeah. So do you think, um, I, I love this. This is just gold. So I'm just sitting here like in amazement, just listening to you and I could listen to you for hours and hours and I won't keep you on for hours, but, um, so, you know, I said this last week and I loved when I had, uh, Sasha on, um, and, and just hearing about the various projects and things that the, the, the token is doing, uh, and moving forward and continuing to adapt. Um, and so my thought, and I made the comment of, we need to stop looking at what's the, you know, win Lambo, who's, you know, who's going to do a thousand X by tomorrow night and we'll all be millionaires. Cause you know, cause you know, that all happens. We've all been a millionaire, right? With 1100 a day, we've all got to be billionaires net, net by now. Right. Cause we all invested in those. Right. But to me, the real value is in six months, can you say I'm still around? I've still grown. I've still done good. I've still built this. The brand is growing. The, you know, yes, there are going to be places where and times where maybe the total uh, count of uh, holders doesn't grow, right? Because because a lot of people are thinking, oh, I got to sell this. I'm going to go run and throw it into here. And then they're complaining now that they have nothing. Well, because you lost it, didn't spend the time in the legit project. So how can we as a token, how can Poodle people help educate how to help change the mentality and say, look, I mean, we keep saying this is a long-term investment, but people don't want to hear that. They think, oh, long-term investment means I'm throwing my money in a bank account. I don't want to do that. So I'm in crypto space because I've heard about my next door neighbor who mined, you know, 50, 15 years ago, and now they're, you know, uh, in multi-millions of dollars and don't work. So how do you balance that? Yeah, it's better return, but you still got to come in and think of it as a long game. How can we do that? Oh, and, and those are great questions, great points to bring up that in, in the token space, this is one of those very few, um, very few spaces in somebody's investment that you actually have more control over the direction of your investment than many others. So as an example, your 401k, you're pulling money out uh, out of your paycheck every every pay period and and you're letting uh, you're letting your investors know or the, those persons investing on your behalf I want to be aggressive, semi-aggressive and so forth because you want to go for a much larger return um, and and hit that and hit that sweet spot much earlier. However, you don't really have control over the direction on how Chase Bank is doing or any of the other stocks that you're investing in. You could stand on the corner and say, hey, go open an account at Chase Bank, and that's not going to matter. In the Poodle space, as an example, um, every investor here has the opportunity to educate their friends, neighbors, relatives, or even that perfect stranger they've not met yet on the charitable causes that they stand for. And what's fascinating in this, in this Binance space is that every one of these tokens could in fact have a purpose behind it. There could be one to help cure cancer. There could be one 
to help veterans' mental health. And yet there could be one to help disabled children uh, acquiring canines. And so you think about that we're no longer expecting fundraising of somebody standing outside of a Walmart selling for a couple of dollars uh, gifts and saying that it's going to go to a charitable organization. You now have this program where thousands of people have come together in the blockchain and said, we're going to support this nonprofit. We're going to support uh, this nonprofit's mission, and we're going to help drive them there. And we're going to do so with all of us collaboratively, collectively coming together, understanding what we're getting into, what it's going to take to get there, and understanding this is a long game. We're not going to get rich tomorrow. But crypto investment is going to happen regardless. Just Let's just put this out there. I have been asked multiple times, Hunter, why should I not just give my money? to canines for disabled children. Please do. Anybody who's watching this, if you want to give your money directly to the charitable organizations that Poodle is supporting, absolutely, please do. But by getting involved in the project, in the crypto space, there is a win-win. Let's be real. We're looking for return our investment, but we're also looking for a way um, of accountability, right? And in the blockchain, there is a charitable wallet that has been established by the Poodle project. And that charitable wallet allows its investors to see what transactions are going into it, what transactions are coming out of it, and where those transactions are going. A lot more sophisticated than just, here's money, and we're going to believe in you of what you tell us the money is going to be spent towards. But back to how you control your investment, which you are positively speaking of this, this great project. If you are posting pictures, inspirational stories, empowering people through education and removing the stigma that everything in the Binance space is a piece of junk, if you are actually educating other folks into what your, what your level of knowledge is, your comfort level is, folks are going to ask, hey, what's, I've heard about crypto. Um, aren't all of it scams? I mean, you, you seem like you're in this and you seem like you're in it to win it. I want to know more. And now all of a sudden you're bringing people into the space. You are, uh, you're educating them on some of those red flags to look for, but you're also educating them on, this is what a legit project looks like. This is what one stands for. This is the way to get into crypto. And Poodle has been a great success story in that regard. So the more people that you can empower through that level of education and comfort, uh, the greater the investment's gonna grow, the, the more, the more good that we're going to be able to do with those uh, nonprofit organizations and the more the investors are going to win uh, overall. Yeah. The caveat, this is crypto, right? It's crypto <laughs> investing in crypto is like a tornado. It can shift its path in a moment and come back. But I am more confident investing in crypto projects like Poodle, knowing that the development team has been hundred percent above board knowing where the money is going, how it's being spent, than just randomly jumping into the next insert random dog name here and losing my money. Yeah. Oh, um, I absolutely love that. And I think it's, it's interesting. So now, well, yeah, there's a whole other way we could go with the whole insert random dog name and Inu name or whatever name and all of those things. And, um, you know, put a word or two behind or in front of Doge or Elon, right, or whatever. Um, but the question then is, now, because of all of the bad that happens, we get pulled into that, right? Legitimate projects like Poodle get buried. And I think 100%. that um, this is where it's key that we all come together and we stand behind when you see these, oh, this is a scam, this is a scam. Well, maybe that was, but this one isn't, and here's why. You know, just like there was someone on Twitter that, you know, we posted the, the Poodle Cast thing, and they commented on there, don't watch this. And I was like, you know, I would myself, I commented on it. Well, I'm a good guy. This is me. I'm doxxed. I'm here. Come listen to the show. You know, tell us what's wrong. This is, you know, I'm trying to be open, and, you know, you can find me, you know, I mean, like I've got a lot to lose, you know, if I'm out here and scam somebody. Right. Um, so, but I'm putting myself out there and I think that's where the only way 
we are now going to be able to fight the stigma of the 1100, you know, the 1100 scams that come out of the day and each day and maybe, maybe 10 are legit, but good luck finding that 10, right, of the 1100. And, you know, and having and, uh, having any of your money left after you've tried the 11, another 1100. And that's why finding something every time I have an opportunity to go, oh, I'm going to put a little somewhere. Well, let's put it back into Poodle because I know it's going to be there. I know we're going to keep doing good. And I know that the the market will go up. Things will change, which I want to get to how I opened up. Talk to me about what it means to have different pairings. The the Doge that you can spend buy in Doge now that we as saw as of today, and all of these things. So, what does that mean? How does that how does that work and impact a, a token and a token like ours? So, there is a difference between a coin and a token. A coin has its own blockchain technology and is only acquired via means of mining. So, Dogecoin, Bitcoin, Litecoin, um, there are tokens that claim coin. Uh, but the reality is, is that a coin has its own blockchain. And so the only way you're going to get them, um, as an example, there's only 21 million Bitcoins uh, in existence and roughly 18, 19 million of them have been mined so far. So there's still some more left. A token, on the other hand, is a piggyback off of an existing network. A token allows a developer to mint a complete set of, of, of tokens here. So it could be uh, one billion tokens, one quadrillion tokens, and so forth. The token gives the developer 100% control over every one of these tokens on borrowing somebody else's blockchain. And you'll hear the terminology, the Binance space, the Binance smart chain space, and so forth. And really, these tokens are using the Binance space, using the Binance uh, blockchain technology to create these what they call smart contracts, these tokens. And so this is actually what's empowered so many of these scams, and it has made it so readily available for the WEN Lambos, because in a matter of minutes, you can create a token. You can say, I'm going to have one quadrillion. It's going to go cure cancer. Everybody give me your money. And the next thing you know, that developer has run off and has taken everything of yours. Um, so when you look at the structure of how it's built on the Binance smart chain, when we go into the pairings, the pairings are allowing you to cross over to other blockchains and use their, uh, use their currency to purchase this. So in other words, us being paired with Doge allows you to purchase Poodle going over to the Doge blockchain and saying, hey, you know, we, we have a handshake now. We speak the same language. You can go ahead and, and you can use Doge that you have stored and you can bring this over because Doge is all about what? Doing only good every day. And Poodle has proven itself uh, to be a legit project trying to do only good every day. So what better way to pair up? So instead of us normally needing to use uh, Fiat to purchase BNB and then BNB to swap for Poodle on the Binance network, now we're able to say, you know what, I've got all these Doge coins that are sitting here and I'd like, I'd like that to work for me. I'd like to donate to a legitimate project that exists on the Binance space. Mm -hmm. So I can now instead say, I want to use Dogecoin to go ahead and purchase my Poodle. And because that pairing has now been established, that bridge has been established, I'm now able to do that. And that's actually a very big deal. Some folks in the crypto space may not know what goes on behind the scenes, but to establish a bridge with other blockchains really helps establish the validity of a project and really helps expose that project, if you will, because now more and more people are going to hear of Poodle. There's going to be more challenges to Poodle. There's going to be more of those Hunter Pattersons looking at them saying, are you, are you legit? Like mm. you're really putting yourself out here. What do you stand for? who are you and they're sitting there we're ready absolutely here's everything we're doing here's everything we want to do and we want to expand these bridges to other blockchain networks whether it be doge whether it be ethereum um come on in and 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 see we are legit and we are empowering legit nonprofit organizations so 
all that does with the pairing, it may seem simple surface to just use Dogecoin now instead of BNB to purchase in the Poodle. But it's a big deal when those bridges start getting established with other blockchains because it helps establish a stronger validity to this project. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I love that because, and that's, that's the thing is the more that we can pair with those things that don't have the negative, I mean, that being, I mean, I like the move, for example, from version one to version two, um, is fan, you know, it was a, a right move, but then you're also putting yourself into, you know, something where it's, you know, it's at risk, right. Um, uh, where, you know, you're, you're in a, a place where, um, I don't know what the right word is, um, where you are aligning yourself with possible scammers, which now you have to fight that. So that now going toward another thing saying, okay, we're going to, we now can buy in Doge. You can buy in all these. And as we start building all those bridges up, now you're saying, look, there's more that trust us. There's more opportunities to not just, worst off, it allows for easier people to buy, which is always a good thing, but the trust level goes and it goes up. And that to me is huge. So that was fantastic. I loved the way you explained all that. So that was fantastic. Um, I know we are going, it's a half hour show and we're already uh, past, uh, two minutes past. So um, I want to um, ask you, I, I just have two other questions. The first one, and I'm going to make it a two-parter. So now you know, so you can, um, what are you most looking forward to with the token, the direction it's going in? You know, is there something that, that, that you like, all of that? And then of course, um, any final thoughts, final thoughts about token, final thing, thoughts and, you know, educate us, things that maybe uh, I haven't asked that you want to, uh, you want people to know. Well, I, I did notice uh, that recently Poodle had been partnered up with Smiles down in, it's an Argentinian nonprofit organization, um, which, which I think is great that here we have this, this token, you know, you and I in the US and talking about international impact and in knowing that the blockchain does allow us to support nonprofits, not just here in the US, but, uh, but our brothers and sisters in the international community as well. So seeing how Poodle is reaching out into that space, I'm very excited to, to see just the growth of, of how they're going to leverage the Dogecoin bridge and how that's going to allow them to reach beyond our borders. Uh, it's a small world in, in the world of the blockchain, and, and I'm really excited to see what Poodle is going to take on next, uh, those nonprofits, what they're going to be supporting, and more importantly, uh, the level of engagement they ask their community, you know, the, the feedback, which organizations do you want to see next? There's so many of them and everyone has so many good ideas, but reaching outside of our borders with that bridge is, has really been a, a, a wonderful talking point for me. And I'm, uh, I'm optimistic for the future for the next six months, at least, uh, of where Poodle's going to be going with that. Awesome. I totally agree. And then the second part now, uh, any last words of education, things that we maybe I didn't ask about, things we need to think about to know, as, especially as you, you, all, you, look, you look at tokens all the time. So I, I think the big thing is, is that if, if you ever have doubts, just, just don't do it, right? It, if you ever feel that you're going to put your money into something um, and, and you feel it's a scam, ask yourself why. Why do I feel this is a scam? Mm -hmm. Ask those questions. Ask for the developers. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. It is your money. You'll hear people say, don't ever invest what you're not willing to lose. But let's be real. We've all thrown extra money in. We probably shouldn't <laughs> have. Um, but ask those questions. And if you ever feel you're not being given the direct answer in the project, don't invest. There's many, many projects that are out there. Um, you know, it, you're not going to get rich tomorrow. You're not going to get your Lambo tomorrow. But that's not the point of an investment. Long-term sustainability is. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say ask those questions. And if you feel that you're not being given the direct answers you're looking for, walk away. Poodle, answer those questions for me. They've answered those questions for many people that I've referred over to this project. Um, but again, it is crypto. So I would definitely say the first thing would it, if you just have any doubts, just, just don't do it. Yep. I love that. That is, uh, I think that is the perfect ending here. Um, 
uh, any, any resources, things like that? How can people get a hold of you? I think you're a huge, um, I know they can find you on the telegram, but, uh, any, any last things that people can, uh, how, how can they find you? Because you're just a wealth of knowledge. Uh, well, more than welcome to come and follow me on Twitter. Uh, my, my handle is at Hunter in crypto. Um, just look for me. And of course, on the telegram group, feel free to drop a line and I'm always willing to answer questions. I'm vetting a lot of projects on a regular basis. Uh, so if, if I am sent a DM about a specific project and I've not been able to get back to anybody, just bear with me. I do respond to them all. And uh, it was an absolute privilege, a pleasure uh, speaking with you this afternoon and looking forward to, uh, looking forward to the future of Poodle and, and beyond. Uh, likewise. Thank you so much uh, for joining. I'm going to say goodbye to you. And I just can't thank you enough, Hunter. I sat back and I just, um, I learned so much. Uh, as you can see, I was just sitting here nodding in my chair for the last, uh, you know, 30, uh, 35 minutes or so, um, because this was exactly what I think we all need. And, you know, everyone knows if you've listened to all the episodes, I came in just like the average person interested in this space, got a you know, attracted to Poodle, saw the good it can do. But I'm also a, you know, newbie in a lot of how these things work. I'm trying to educate myself. And that's another reason why this podcast exists, because I want to bring people like Hunter on who do this and look at this and and do this all the time and look at a ton of projects. And then by looking at so many go, but that's one that's doing it right. That's one I can believe in. Um, and just like I did, we all come to this project for different reasons and in different ways. So um, with that being said, everyone, uh, I just, again, want you to make sure you go and follow at PoodleCast. Make sure you like, subscribe, tell 100 of your closest friends. Um, let's build this up because if we can turn this into something to do good, both in educating the community, um, but also developing our charities. That's why I'm in it. That's why I love it. And I love this community and people who really believe in the power of what crypto can do, right? Let's not let all the scammers drive the conversation. We can do this. We can take it over. Um, there's going to be a point where people are going to get over the fact that the 1,100 that come out a day, and they're going to start recognizing, I can't give in to all of these. I can't give in to all of these. And they're going to come and find a community that they want to get into, and they want to believe in, and a project they want to believe in. And I believe that Poodle is very, very well set to be able to do that. So, with all of that, I just want to thank you all uh, for listening, uh, viewing, and we will see you next time. Take care now.